the selling point of the app is if you wanted to practice your English, you can chat with native speakers. Yeah. Have you ever paid to chat with a foreigner? No, never. What's the role of the language teacher? Uh, for my students, majority of my students, I'm a confidence booster. A lot of them do not have confidence in speaking English. Uh, even there are some where, you know, their their level is when they talk to me, their level is uh, intermediate. But in their minds, they think they're beginners. So yeah, you your role is you think to motivate people. Yes. Oh. Um, I mo I motivate I motivate them to to kind of uh, get rid of their fears of talking. A lot of them have fears and and kind of worries that people might judge them for making mistakes. This is something I recently read. Mm -hmm. The role of the teacher is to teach the student how to learn alone without a teacher, how to become an independent learner. What do you think about that? That's part of it, but that's not all of it. Like I, I encourage my students to go out into the world and any chance they get to speak English to take advantage of that. You know? So you think speaking is at the core of language learning? Yes. Uh, well, practicing is at the core of language learning. So what is practicing in, in, your, in your view? What does the word practice in relation to language mean? Uh, being involved in the language, in listening and reading. Those are the two most important things. Those two so things why go out mean... into the world? What does it mean to go out into the world and practice? Why well, not just when, read at home or listen to podcasts or read interesting books? Because that's a safe space. You learn, your your humans have a unique ability that when they're not in their comfort zone, they gain a lot. I agree with you 100% that reading and listening is by far the most important thing. I mean, it's common sense. It's what we call input. I don't like the word input, but you have to get the it knowledge in you first. Yeah. It is input. Yeah. So... What does going out into the world mean in the context of reading and listening? Well, not reading. But or pra practice, about... practice. So when you say you, I, you I encourage just, people just, to practice reading? I just, I, I just explained it. Like you gain a lot, of, a lot of students don't have this fear, this non-fear thing that you just mentioned. A lot of them are shy. A lot of them are, are um you know, scared of something. I don't know. Like scared, scared of judgment. Of speaking, I would agree maybe with you, but why reading and listening people would be afraid or need to go out into the world to read or, and listen? That's it's what called, I It's called, ex no, 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 no. I'm not talking about, uh, reading has nothing to do with going out in the world. Reading, you do on your own. <laughs> you do that on your own. Listening too. I mean, listening, podcasts. You do that on your yes, own. Yeah, but listening, yeah. listening to someone live, listening to someone, that's, that's, um, how do I explain this? There's just a, a, like a difference. It's like, it's like, uh, do you know baseball? Do you know the, the baseball? There's batting practice, right? Where there's an automatic machine that pitches the ball. You can hit that all day, but it doesn't compare to actually going against a live person. So if I'm able to understand a, a movie or a, the news on TV or complicated podcasts you think i'll be i'll have difficulties understanding regular people on the street it depends on you if you have that fear that's why i encourage my my students fear to, to understand no, uh, people fear to on the understand, street fear to interact a lot a lot of students have a have a fear of interacting so me encouraging them to go out there is so they can get rid of that like i said I, mo um, I i look at my role as a motivator right a rather frustrating conversation with this fellow he didn't agree nor disagree with anything I said. Quite confusing. He says that speaking is the most important thing, and then he says that reading and listening are the two most important things. But his main job is to motivate his students to go out into the world and speak English. But I blame myself for the way this conversation went, because I made the mistake of booking a person who hadn't learned a foreign language himself. Not to be repeated. So you think speaking is at the core of language learning? Yes. Uh, well, practicing is at the core of language learning. So what is practicing in, in, your, in your view? 
What does the word practice in relation to language mean? Uh, being involved in the language in listening and reading. Those are the two most important things. I encourage my students to go out into the world and any chance they get to speak English to take advantage of that. But the most telling thing about his lack of knowledge with regards to language learning and language teaching is his complete inability to comprehend the most important question I ask every language teacher. Would a native speaker of English pay money to have a conversation with you? Native speaker of, of your language, in this case, English. I don't think so, because they have, they, they use, like they have the ability to interact with English. Even if they're in a foreign country, they're still going to interact with their, their friends, their family from home. So they'll still get to interact with that. And if a native the, the, you speaker know, the, of your native language wouldn't pay money to listen to you talk, it means you have nothing of value to say, which in turn means that there is no effing reason why a non-native speaker of your language should pay money to chat with you. No reason whatsoever. Anybody who pays money to practice speaking is either delusional or lonely. Everything you need to know about how to learn a foreign language you can find in my book Virtually Native, which is available on Amazon and virtuallynative.com. You have one life. Don't waste it.